Welcome to Five Facts Friday. This Friday, we're looking at five reasons it's not a good idea to keep a falconry bird inside your house. This video was inspired by one of our summers, Marco, and Coming in here to clean out the chili and blue eagle buzzard really made me remember Marco's comments and his tongue-in-cheek comment about uh, Five Facts Friday, why shouldn't you keep your bird of prey indoors? Now this guy is someone that's been passionate to keep birds of prey, or be a falconer actually, for a long, long time. But the situation, or his situation is, he lives in an apartment. And he said, but why can't I keep that bird, or a falconry bird, in there? Now. The short answer is, well, you can, can't you? Because people keep parrots and parrot-like birds and finches and all kinds of birds inside their apartments and have done for probably hundreds of years. It is different for a falconry bird. No bird is, is, does well it, for certain reasons in an apartment or in a house. But for falconry, remember, that's a bird that you're trained to fly free and, and either fly to a lure, like a lure-bound falcon, or a hunting bird, falconry. Now, there's so many reasons. reason that I can think of just being in this aviary is birds molt their feathers. Now, they have a lot more feathers than you think. So a bald eagle has something like seven and a half thousand feathers. And of course you think, hasn't got that many. Most of those feathers are these underdown down feathers, which kind of insulate the bird and keep them warm. And when these birds molt, these feathers, these are bigger feathers, they get everywhere. But those tiny downy feathers really do get everywhere absolute nightmare all over your house when these birds are molting every day and they just blow away in the breeze of the birds wings and if you don't keep a good housework and keep tidy then those feathers are going to attract feather mites and especially clothes moths into your house because the clothes moth evolved to eat feathers and um, detritus in birds nests so you're kind of attracting them in not a good thing and certainly incredibly messy so I think reason number one fact number one is birds of prey are really messy. A cockatiel eats seeds and does little poos down at the bottom of its cage. If you look at birds like, this is actually a buzzard, a giant buzzard eagle really, or the buzzard family, or you look at hawks, or you look at eagles, they fire their poo. We call it slicing. They don't just poo downwards, do a plop. They fire their excrement out. And the more well fed they are, the more back pressure they've got, seriously, and the further they can fire their poo. So, have a look over here. He's got a perch in the centre there. And this guy, when well fed, still fired his poo onto this wall. He's got that much range. This is, where are we now? This is two days worth of poo from this chili and blue eagle buzzard. In here, which you'll see me do in a second, this can be hosed, it can be scrubbed down and hose through the gravel base of the aviary. And indeed, it can have a disinfectant solution spraying over the top of that if needs be. So, birds of prey incredibly messy. In an aviary or in an outdoor weathering, you've got the option to use hose pipe, scrubbing brush, clear away any excrement and hose it away and disinfect the area if you like. If you're keeping a bird of prey indoors, you can only really use something like newspaper, which can create some problems in itself, to catch the poo. It's not going to be practical to keep any bird of prey, like a hawk or an eagle or a buzzard, regardless of size, because it will fire its poo so far. Where are you going to? What are you going to do? You're going to have your living room, plastic sheeting all around to catch it. Then it's kind of not your home or your house anymore. Um, many of the falcons do indeed just plop straight down. And going back to the beginning. I've read articles before YouTube and seen articles of people in places like Brazil and Mexico that fly and hunt with American kestrels, tiny bird of prey, and they'll keep them on a shelf perch setup. Uh, where we're going to put, we'll put that up here, a shelf perch setup where they can be in a relatively small space and their poo is easier to contain. Feathers still go everywhere. So, micro raptors, you could keep them indoors from the mess point of view but there's still plenty of reasons why not to. But for now, I need to scrub that poo off. They 
got feathers, mess everywhere. They're predators, they're carnivores. If animals eat meat, their poos are stinky. Not only copious, as in birds of prey, and with all birds of prey, they cough up pellets of undigested food, which is pretty rank. And again, needs picking up with the feathers, or it attracts clothes moss. Now have a look at the, the lined area over there. It's had a good scrub. Still looks filthy because birds of prey poo sticks like poo to a blanket. It doesn't matter in here, it's been clean and it's been hosed down and washed away. Do you want to look at that in your house? If you get that on any part of your enclosure area, wherever you're going to keep that bird of prey in your apartment, it's going to look pretty rank a lot of the time unless you get it just right or you're going down to something like an American kestrel for sure. Um, and again, it's going to smell. It smells, they poo all day long. They don't just do a poo once or twice a day, maybe like a dog. They poo all day long because their waste is liquid, a bit like many reptiles. So you've got those white urates. They don't do a wee. That white stuff is the wee of birds of prey. And that is like cement with whatever it touches. So filthy, smelly, looks disgusting. Importantly also, these feathers aren't just annoying because birds produced feather dust. And feather dust helps, helps their feathers and keeps their feathers healthy. And they're producing it all of the time. That feather dust is a serious, seriously bad thing for your or my lungs. It's incredibly bad. You've heard of cystitosis, lung disease that often parrot fanciers have. Um, and another one is pigeon fanciers lung. It's the same thing. You're getting that dust down your lungs. It's a bit like getting asbestos, asbestosis. It's incredibly damaging to your lungs and can cause COPD and long-term lung infection. That, that can be fatal. So you've got birds in your house producing all this dust. And this goes for all birds. People, I would never have a parrot in my bedroom. Really bad for you, and people keep them in their bedrooms. This dust is being produced all of the time. It is seriously bad for your health. So fact number two, it can be bad for your health, Health keeping birds inside. Um, flipping that around, fact number three, it's adverse for the bird's health. Because a full comely bird, it needs to be waterproof. And it has a, like most birds, a, an oil gland, a preen gland, and it takes a drop of oil from that gland and preens it through individually through its feathers, oiling them and waterproofing its feathers. Now, a traditional falconer puts, falconer puts his birds out to weather. So when you see our birds out on their bow perches or their block perches in the sunshine having a bath, equally they'll be sitting there, unless it's freezing, in the rain for certain amounts of time. They're out to weather, they're being weathered. And that means they respond naturally. They oil their feathers more because they know they don't want to get wet and the rain encourages them to do so. Birds kept permanently indoors are usually have really poor waterproofing. So when you do want to fly them, they get soaked through really easily. But it's the same from their health point of view, ultraviolet. Now, any, any lizard keeper will know that ultraviolet rays from the sun are incredible and, and people that keep tortoises not so much snakes but for reptiles the ultraviolet rays of the sun certain parts of the spectrum are critically important for their manufacturing vitamin d which means they can assimilate the calcium they eat it's exactly the same for birds of prey and other, and other birds they actually do really benefit from ultraviolet light not being able to go out in the rain and the natural sunshine is definitely not good for their health i'm going to come out of here and I'm going to talk about fact number four, why you shouldn't keep a bird of prey indoors or why it's certainly a difficult idea. Can't be doing this in the living room. Now, fact number four, if you look around the falconry centre, our birds are either tethered or they're kept in open-fronted, free-loft mews. And what these birds have is visibility of the sky, they see lots of other birds, including nowadays lots of other birds of prey. They've got open fronted, they also have a, most of them have a swing perch right at the front, so they can come right near the front. And they get to see people and strangers, um, dogs, prams, more dogs, aeroplanes, wildlife, as part of their daily routine. Lawn mowers, tree cutters, it's all part of the daily routine. And it actually gives them quite a lot of stimuli, so they're not just sitting there getting bored. And it also means when we got to fly them, they're manned to these things. It's a falconry term. Manning means to get your bird used to all of man's things and man's world. It's a sexist term, but it's an old term. Woman's, if you like. But it's, it's to get used to people's environment because our falconry birds work within that environment as well 
as out in the countryside. So if you keep your bird indoors all the time, it gets none of that stimuli. It might see your dog, it might see your cat, and the cat might have a fight with it, and they might both get injured and die. Another reason not to keep them indoors, bonus fact. But by keeping it indoors all the time, on a daily basis, it doesn't really get to see much going on, only you. So when you take that bird out to fly, the world can be quite frightening. Imagine someone institutionalised for many, many years, suddenly being dropped off in a town centre. Overwhelming stimuli. And it can be like that for your bird, unless you put an awful lot of time in manning the bird physically with you out and about. It's leading a very sheltered life. It can get bored. Um, clever birds of prey. Now, birds of prey aren't clever like um, parrots or ravens, but intelligent species of birds of prey such as harris hawks, once they're bored, they'll do exactly what a bored parrot will do. They'll systematically start picking and plucking their own feathers until areas of their body are bored, and they'll never let the feathers grow back. It becomes a self-harming habit through boredom and lack of stimuli. So for sure, a real downside is that bird is lacking environmental stimuli. Not good for it mentally or physically when you're flying it outside. Now, a really important thing, fact five if you like, is that the stuff we use in our house, compared to the fresh air outdoors, can be incredibly toxic to birds of prey. In fact, forget the prey, it can be incredibly toxic to birds. So simple everyday things that you wouldn't notice will kill birds in your house stone dead. Things like air fresheners can be incredibly toxic to birds, certainly over a period of time. Um, birds' lungs, if you don't know, birds' lungs are way more efficient than mammalian lungs. So any pollutants in the air will kill birds before we've even noticed. Hence the canary in the old days going down the mine shaft. The canary would die from noxious gases before the miners even had any difficulty, early warning. So if you're using a Teflon frying pan and you burn the pan, it releases Teflon gas. Absolutely fatal to any birds in the area, in the house, seriously. It doesn't have to be in your kitchen. If you're using a hairdryer, and it overheats. Many of them now have Teflon elements, produces the same effect. Kills any birds in the house. You won't even know. You won't even know it's there or exists. Um, and certainly, again, things things on a slower term. Air fresheners have proven to be really bad for a lot of bird species. Again, it's affecting their lungs on a slow, slighter, a lower level. So, the health risks for the birds actually can be quite high. We've talked about some before, and there are of course other health risks, aren't there? There's have you really seriously got cats and dogs? Now, my dogs don't bother my birds, but do your cats and dogs interact with that bird in the day? Um, you've also got things like children and guests. You know, th these things, the bird can't be protected or sort of housed away from the goings on of family life. Anecdotal story. I had an American kestrel, it was my son's, and I had an outdoor reptile room. Now, many years ago this is, I built it an indoor style. We'll put some on the screen, I think we already have, of an indoor shelf perch setup for an American Kessel. And I thought, do you know what? The UK winter, it was a really, really freezing winter. Very tough on any small creatures, warm bloody creatures. So I thought, do you know what? I'll build him a shelf perch in the corner of my reptile room. When in one day, the bird was dead. It was hanging off its shelf perch. Now, the leash length meant it physically couldn't hang off of its shelf perch. Hanging upside down, soaking wet. My brain just went completely blank. I just stared at this poor dead bird, pondering how I'm going to tell my son, Kyle. And as in the fuzz of blankness, I noticed one of my python's cages, enclosures, was slightly open. The python had escaped, crawled all the way up other vivariums, ate the American kestrel, whole, constricted it, would have done, swallowed it whole. And then as the python fell off the shelf perch, which was about this big, to go off somewhere else, the leash of the bird pulled the poor thing back out of the python's throat, stone dead. A ridiculous thing, but would never have happened if it have had its delegated outdoor enclosure. Things happen, and with any animal keeping, there's a Murphy's Law. If it can happen, it will happen. But for sure, if you want to keep a raptor indoors, it's going to have to be tiny, like an American casserole and for sure I think you'll regret it and the bird most certainly could. Food for thought Marco, we look forward to hearing how you get on because I know you want to be a falcon and I know you'll make it happen if you want it to happen. Give up that lease and move house. See you soon guys.